So, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to come here. Um, I was very flattered, actually, to be asked to give you a presentation. I'm going to talk to you about a study that I did um, at EPFL with uh, what students say uh, when they fill in a student evaluation. I hope you're interested. Just a, a bit about me. So, as uh, Leonard said, I am a psychologist. Huh? I specialized in social psychology and theories of learning. And I then worked on quality management of learning. And then I changed a bit. And rather than quality, I, I do now what's called faculty development. So I support professors and people involved in teaching, in improving and in understanding the practice, but more in a coaching way rather than in a summative way of you know the standards say you need to do this, more in a way maybe you feel better working this way and students learn better if we use some other methods. And this is what my whole quest is about in understanding, um, in teaching and improving it based on different sorts of information. And please feel free to interrupt me anytime. Huh? My, my way of uh, presenting is interactive, interruptive. Okay, my aim today is to highlight the importance of uh, the feedback provided by the students. I mean, how many of you get feedback from students and sometimes you just push it in a drawer or you just read a couple of bad comments that are quite hurtful and you just focus on this and you don't focus on the, on the good aspects. And to share some uh, results of what we found that students like and dislike about teaching. I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about this. And then I want to know what your opinion is on this and this is why I brought this technological um, innovative thing, a clicker or a sapet as we call it, is to get your opinion and have an immediate response on my PowerPoint for voting. So you're going to have a few questions. I'm going to ask you to vote one, two, three, four, or five, depending on uh, what you feel like answering. OK. So let's start using the clicker. Can you answer this question? Everybody has a clicker? Yes? Okay, so if somebody doesn't have, discuss with someone who has, or yes, up there, yes. So, could you please answer the question by clicking and pointing towards my computer rather than the screen? Hmm? Okay, they're coming in, they're coming in. Getting feedback from your students is necessary to improve your teaching. It's a provocative question. Yes? Everybody has answered? Yes? Yes? Okay. Ooh, totally agree. That's very positive. Yes, some agree. I'm not sure if it's necessary. Probably you feel it's good, but it's not necessary. Huh? Okay, let me tell you a bit about student evaluations because I've been working on this topic. Um, student evaluations of teaching um, generalized in the 1950s in the US um, to know about how students feel about a course and to give feedback to the teachers. Now it's become generalized and it's become it's taken by all the quality assurance procedures as a way of measuring satisfaction. Some people agree and some people disagree. The most common form of student evaluation is the questionnaire, paper or online today. Um, and there are two main views to using student evaluations, their feedback. One is formative, so we get what students say and we coach you to improve and please, this is a confidential information to help you improve, but it doesn't go to your teaching dossier. And there is the summative one where it's really putting pressure on the professorship. Are you familiar? Yes? <laughs> there are a wide scope of practices. For instance, at EPFL, at Craft, we, we are very adamant in splitting the quality from the pedagogy. So there is the one question evaluation that goes in week nine of the semester, nine of 14, and the students have to answer, well, they can answer online plus open comments. These are the comments that I took, open comments. They are not positive and negative, it's just open comment section. And there is a pedagogical service. Any teacher who feels like they want to have some feedback or some coaching or some training, they come to us and uh, they are free not to come as well. 
personalized coaching of professorship. There has been some recent studies that demonstrate that are more efficient than teacher training. So you can do all the teacher training you want, but uh, you would apply 30%, whereas if you do coaching based on your own practices, studies demonstrate that you would apply 80% of what's been told and you would adapt it to your own practices. Now another uh, and more recent uh, approach to teaching evaluations is, well, evaluations of teaching should not just comprise student opinion, they should be also peer evaluations, colleagues coming into our class, which I know is something very common in language teaching. Uh, observations, video recording, which I tend to do quite a lot. I video record the lecture and then I view it together with the teacher. Um, any questions? Comments? No? Now, what is a big issue with evaluation? Now, there are certain ideas that we have about its usability, its practicability, its validity that sometimes are true and sometimes are untrue. So in the 1990s, Ali Amoni in the US, he did a study, he did a review of all the studies published so far in English about teaching evaluation and said, okay, let's attack the myths about teaching evaluation. He found 16 myths, of which I chose two for my study. Huh? And even after his study, many people have attacked some of the myths and there's never a one conclusion overall. For instance, one of the myths is that only satisfied students respond to the teaching evaluation. Well, at EPFL we found out that that's not true. But in other universities they found out that it's true. It depends on the method you study, on the way you get it, on the timing and on the institutional culture. So now the trend is to do, to take the myths and to apply them to your institutional context. So I looked at some of these myths. Let's say the first myth I thought was interesting because it's quite common. Charismatic teachers get higher rating than other teachers who might not be charismatic but might be very good teachers. What do you think? Please vote. Okay? Wow. Lots of votes. Ha uh -huh. Oh God, everybody agrees. <laughs> Does anybody want to share the idea of why you think charismatic teachers get better ratings? No? I'm amazed. But it's a common misperception. And I have to say there are studies who say it's true and there are others who say it's not true. And this is one of the myths that I that I thought was worth looking into. Huh. Okay, mature students are fairer judges. The more advanced the student, the more valid are their, their uh, opinions. As in bachelor and masters, or uh, undergraduates, uh, the younger, the less mature they are. Yes. Physical age. Physical and academic, yes, physical age. Yep. Everybody done? Ooh, kind of disagree. Now that's interesting. Why is that? Anybody wants to share an idea, an opinion on this? No? Okay. How oh, interesting. Kind of disagree. Hmm. Well, let's tell you. I have these same ideas like not necessarily because some students, you know, they know what they want even if they're young. Some students know what is good teaching even if they are not at the master level or at the bachelor level. So I collected all the open comments from the 2008 and 2009 academic year of this indicative evaluation. We call it the smoke detector because one question, are you satisfied by the teaching, totally agree, agree, um, disagree, totally disagree, 
we think it doesn't tell us much about the quality of a course, but it's a smoke detector. It would show there is smoke somewhere. We don't know if there's fire, but definitely the teacher must go and look into this, and the director of the section or the program would be informed. But there's no, no more in-depth uh, information going in this. Plus open comments. So will the students, and we did another study showing that students will write comments, not necessarily if they are less satisfied. They will write comments as well to congratulate the professor in things that they do well. <clears throat> 1,200 uh, courses graded, meaning all courses given at EPFL, 8, 18,000 student comments in all. So I took them. Uh, Considering all the frameworks to study student comments of teaching, but considering that we have an overriding polytechnical um, and engineering culture, it is very different to other culture, co sorry, cultures of teaching. Uh, social sciences students might be interested in other aspects, are used to different type of teaching, perhaps less frontal. It's a highly international institution. It's ascribed to a European context, as many of your institutions. And there is a wide variety of methods of instruction, laboratories, practicals, lectures, projects. So all these issues have to do with what students perceive as good and bad in their teaching. So I said, okay, let's see what is out there. So I took the seven principles of good teaching of Chigring and Gamson. I got inspired of that, and then I got uh, another one, Luis, uh, who says, okay, we should read from student comments and make a framework for this. I worked, we worked on these categories. I didn't do it myself. I did it with my other four colleagues. We exchanged, we validated, and I have, uh, in all, 27 categories. Eight main categories and splitted. We did an interjudge analysis, having two people trained to read the same comments at the same time and see if they would get the same codings for them. In all, after all the validation, 300 comments were coded, meaning that after 150, the same codings will come up, will come up, will come up, so it's saturation point. We'll have 470 positive comments and 600 negative comments. Now this is the framework. Is it readable? Yes. So you see. What about what they say about the lecturing? And they can go positive and negative, this framework. What they say about the course design, what they comment about student work, impressions about the teacher, which would be the, the first point of my, the myth. Huh? Impressions, uh, course dynamic, evaluation and assessment. What do they say about the exam? What do they say about the projects, the deliverables? And personal opinions. Any questions? Yes? Okay, here are the results, and I put them in French because it was work done on comments made mostly in French. Uh, in order to know the difference between mature and less mature students, under is the master's and up is the bachelor level, what students are most uh, satisfied about is the content. Interesting course, new, cutting edge, updated. The coherence of the course, it's well lined up, there's a black thread. Structure, you know, it has a beginning and an end. It doesn't go over time. There is a link between activities, so they go to do an exercise after a lecture and they see how it applies. Enthusiasm and engagement of the teacher, not really very important, huh? Important five, but it's not the most important. And importance in the study plan, yes, bachelor students mostly are interested, say, this is relevant for my training, I'm gonna apply it as an engineer, as an architect, it's good course, I'm happy. And uh, supervision or encadrement, which I always, term, I always have difficulty translating. Now, which were the most common negative points? Well, they are very similar. When the content is redundant, it's something they already saw, it's something that is a bit going here and everywhere, they will say it and they, it will make a bad impression on the students. A lack of coherence, you know, it's like we have three different professors and they're saying the same thing at the same time, but none of them is going really in depth in one. There you go. A lot of work, bachelor students, 
they will say this is too charged and they will complain about it. On clear presentation, that uh, was a surprising result. Master students are much more demanding. No. Insufficient supervision, lack of coordination between teachers as well. The master students are more sensitive to this. And core support or lecture notes as well. The master students are more demanding on this point. Any questions? Yes? Well, it's not biased because they're engineers. The University of Lausanne, uh, Denny is doing a study. Just sorry. Yes, Denny did a study with the comments. He did a different kind of study as well to find out what are the needs to do training in teachers, and he presented this a couple of years ago. How can they compare? Well, we haven't compared them because as, as his framework is very different from mine, and I asked him for the framework, we cannot really compare them. But um, it's something we are discussing in doing. You think? Yeah, it's possible. It's it's very possible. Yeah. Hmm. So I'll give you an example of some of the comments. Um, so in blue is the positive, huh? So here they're saying uh, plenty of comments like this. Very interesting, pity that the course is just a copy of the lecture notes, you know, so there's no enthusiasm, the teacher is just reading them. So, but it's interesting, the content, I go and see the lecture. Huh? Very interesting course, it's a pity that there's no, it's not interactive, huh? as you say, uh, not interactive and that the teacher is not very nice when they are uh, responding to questions. Students appreciate coherent and well-organized courses. Huh? It is well prepared. We can see the application within the course and, and the exercises. So they, they don't like wasting their time working out why should I do this. That's, perhaps that's the engineering culture. Bachelor students will complain about the amount of work. I don't know if this is a trend you see in other universities. Is it? Students at EPFL, they complain all the time about, um, but they do have a 35 hour schedule per week, which is really very heavy in, in our pedagogical point of view for the first year, and that's why half of them fail the first year. Master students are more demanding in terms of the content. Huh? and in the logic of a program, and this was for us quite revealing at, at the EPFL, I was saying, my God, you know, the master courses are not really well coordinated. We need to talk to the professors and we need to think about the programs to make more sense of what follows the bachelor level and to make foreign students get integrated into a whole logic of a program. Any questions? So this is what I found uh, that I wanted to show to you. I'm going to be going to Canada to present this at the Association Internationale Pédagogie Universitaire in one month. Um, and I think what I liked about doing this was to reappropriate certain elements that are said about student comments and student feedback to the context of the institution where I work. Um, I would really like to know your comments. So, once you know information like this and you read things like this, would it help you improve your teaching? You were very positive at the beginning, so maybe you change your minds. Okay, you've answered. Are you still very, very positive? Well, no. Kind of agree more or less it has changed your mind. I think evaluation in all should be complemented by other types of information about the course, the teacher, and the way the institution supports this. 
Okay, so it was a quick presentation because I'm really looking forward to your feedback and your questions. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yes. I think evaluating courses is also something that people need to get used to doing. Uh, and this is why the fact that mature students are a bit more reliable means that they have understood what it aims and also have understood the humanity on a professor. Uh, someone who teaches is also a human being who has feelings, who has invested, who has prepared, who's expecting you know, to be told things but not to be demolished. That's not the way to go. So yes, I think it's related to the fact that somebody has a very high opinion of themselves and thus expects everybody to be at his time, you know, at his height, without really knowing what are les angers of his opinion. Yeah, but I would always, uh, when I work with professors, I always say, you know, don't focus on the negative. You know, focus on the entire feedback you are getting. There's always something that might be going wrong and uh, <clears throat> try to find the equilibrium. Yes? Do you find that sometimes you have negative feedback from the students, but when you do peer review and um, coaching, you get quite a different result? Oh yes, actually, very good point. Um, we get, uh, when the indicative evaluation, so this MOOC detector is under four out of six, the teacher has to have an in-depth evaluation, a, big, a longer questionnaire uh, by the end of the semester. And they have the alternative of coming to us to have an ISO questionnaire made uh, suited to his teaching. And usually the case is by the end of the course, with all the other questions, you know, decorticating all the aspects of teaching, the evaluation would be higher. Because students will find the one question, you know, he doesn't have good oral skills back, but the rest is okay. And then there is an overall question. Uh, as well, uh, well, we usually do the evaluation at the exam, after the exam. So the student gets a better idea of why they did everything they had to do, why the teacher had to cover everything they had to cover. It's a more complete view. Yes. Thank you for the question. Statement that charismatic teachers get yeah. better evaluations is a myth. It's a myth. So that's what you think. I, that's what I think, and I think in the case of EPFL, it's not true. Okay. And the other one was mature students give, do a better job of evaluating. Yes. It's also a myth. Yes, it's true. In our case, yes. It, no, it's true. It's true. It they have a clear idea. Yes. Yes. That was wrong. That is true for us. Yeah, but there are studies, uh, there's just publication of studies uh, that say it's not true. Uh, and, I, and I actually think we need to apply them to each institutional case. Yeah. And do, you, do teachers use this? Use the clickers? Yes, we're introducing them and they're becoming quite popular, especially for large classes to get students to participate. As well, for, for you as a teacher, it's quite useful to know where they're standing, to see if they're following. You do a quiz in the middle or at the end of a huge topic, and then you go, okay, did you understand it? Then, yes, then I can move on. No, then I need to revise. And in chemistry, they're using them on the first year, all professors, yes. 
Well, I, I'm, I think people are, yeah.